Garage Band for Mac's master track. What is it? How does it work? And how can you use it to make your tracks sound better? Let's dive in. Hey, it's Patrick from the garagebandguide.com. In this video, I'm going to take a closer look at GarageBand's master track and share three of my favourite ways to use it. GarageBand for Mac's master track works in a similar way to a mix bus in other DAWs like Logic, for example. All of the tracks in your project with all of their applied effects, panning and automation info goes into the master track. You can then adjust the volume, the EQ, the compression of the project as a whole or add global reverb and echo effects and then all of that comes out the other end of the master track into your headphones or speakers. The master track is hidden by default in GarageBand. To get to it, head to Track in the toolbar and select Show Master Track to have it appear under the rest of the tracks in your project. Funnily enough, one of the best ways to use the master track is to master your project. Now, I'll be totally upfront here and say that I probably wouldn't finish off a track that I plan to release by opening the master track in the mix project and using it that way. I'll usually export my fully mixed project first down into a wave or an AIFF file and then import that into a fresh new garage band project before adding things like compression, EQ, etc. to that single mixed down track. Doing things this way helps, among other things, to help keep CPU pressure down and give you better control over your overall outputted track's volume. Using the master track in an existing project is extremely convenient, however, and the master track gives you some really useful presets to get you started. With your master track selected, open the library pane, and you have several factory presets here that will load up different stock plugins with various parameters applied, depending on the genre you select. If I slap a rock master preset onto this project, a channel EQ, multipressor, and limiter plugins will be added to the master track's plugin slots. There's also an additional compressor and gain plugin that are off by default, but you can switch on if you want to add some drive to the track, and an exciter to add some additional brightness if needed. If you'd like to see more videos on how to produce a releasable master using GarageBand, then make sure and leave me a comment below, after showing me some thumb love, of course. Back in the good old days of analog recording, creating a fade out effect where a track would gradually decrease in volume at its end was a painstaking exercise in mathematical calculation. Nowadays, most digital audio workstations can automate a fade-out for you, with GarageBand being no exception. First, you need to correctly set your end point marker, as this denotes where your fade-out will take place. Now, in the Mix menu in the toolbar, if you select Create Volume Fade-Out on Main Output, the master track will open if it isn't already, and volume automation will be added to the end of the track to create a fade out effect.
finally, you can add a wee bit of flavor to your projects by adding effect plugins to your master track. Now, GarageBand has some stock plugins you can use to create some interesting effects on your projects. The Space Designer, for example, can do wonders to change the whole feel of more ambient or slow burn tracks. Third-party plugins can change the character of your project even more drastically. A couple of freebies I recommend you try are Isotope Vinyl and in Gellin Audio's Kaput. You'll find links to both of those down in the description. There are three ways that you can use GarageBand's master track to improve the sound of your projects. If you fancy taking a deep dive into how you can make GarageBand's drums sound real, then click right here. Take care of yourself. See you next time. Bye for now.